I'm Firefighter Jason Terryberry, this is Station 13, and welcome to Station Saturday. Come on in. Take a step on in there. A lot of Station Saturdays, you'll see they have these big, really big glamorous entryways. We don't really have that here, but this is our home. We like it and we're proud of it. So you step into our bay here, you run a medic unit out of here and an engine. Um, there's a legacy Littleton station here. It's going to seem like a lot of this door is going to be very Littleton heavy. But it's hard to not, hard to ignore 50 years of history along with the three years we've been merged with South Metro. Uh, I'm really proud of that history and I hope I do a good job representing that for all the past members and present who are still here who helped develop all this. Um, so this station was actually built in 1967, but it goes back before then uh, when it was all developed. You go all the way back to Littleton Fire, they had station one and two. And it was actually, you'll see that this is named after Colonel Paul Wolf. Uh, you go back to World War II, he was in the Naval Air Corps, and upon his retirement, if you will, end of service, he moved to Littleton, Colorado, and we had Station 1 and 2 that covered the main city of Littleton, and he lived in the outskirts and there really wasn't fire protection, so whenever there was any kind of fire or emergency incident, the volunteers would actually get in a rig there and come out to the district. So 1948-1949, um, he championed the idea of actually starting the Littleton Fire Protection District so they could offset those costs. Um, and work with the city, that way they could get some full-time response to actually come out here, take care of the citizens. Then in 1960, the call volumes increased to a level where they decided they had to actually have paid employees so they could staff it and get help out here a lot more readily. So they hired their first 12 employees in 1960. And then in 1965, there was a 100-year flood of the South Platte River, and they quickly realized that they needed a station on the west side because they were completely cut off and couldn't respond across the Platte River. So in 1967, they broke ground, and at that time, Paul Wolf, he was actually the first district board president back in 1949, and was still on the board all the way until then. Um, so he was, had a huge hand in getting this station built, and as I said, it was built in 1967, and at the time, it was engine three. There was a station one, two, and three, and they built on from there. Then fast forward to 1974, um, Littleton Fire was the first department in the state to start running ALS engines. And what that meant was they had a paramedic and paramedic capabilities when they were responding. So that was new, innovative, um, really cool history. And engine three um, was one of those apparatus. So that was uh, 1974. Uh, 1978, they decided to change to a lime yellow color on their apparatus. Uh, if you take a look at that, the uh, membership wasn't too happy with it, but that's what they decided. And so for the next 15 years, they went with lime yellow. And engine three was the first one they got. So they were the first rig. And then you fast forward to 1991. We got a new admin and they decided to change it and go to red. Engine three got the first red engine. So there's a lot of history in between there, of course. You go back to 1988 uh, and they did a renumbering. And we went from station three to station 13, station you know, 12 was station two. So they just added a 10 to it. So when we were running mutual aid calls and with other districts and other departments, we wouldn't be too much confusion with multiple engine threes on scene. So that's where that numbering came in. Uh, that was also the year in 1988 that they actually dedicated the station to Colonel Paul Wolf and put his name out on the front. Uh, it was the year of his passing, I believe. So that was 1988. So with the dedication and honor of this station being named the Paul Wolf Memorial Station, that's where we get our logo from, uh, the Wolf Pack. It just makes sense, Wolf, Wolf Pack. So that's been in place ever since, from 1988. So yeah, a little more history about Station 13 here. Um, April 20th, 1999, everybody knows the events that unfolded at Columbine High School. Um, Station 13, moreover, Medic 13, which was Rescue 13 at the time, they got called. The initial dispatch came out as a smoke alarm. So it was Engine 11, Rescue 11, Rescue 13 and Battalion 1. And upon their arrival, 
obviously with history you've seen what unfolded there. Engine 13 was out of position, they were out on a different call. So obviously with what occurred, they eventually responded as they did the whole department. So there's a lot of ties because they were right in our first due district. And so we even have a little, they added a little, the date of it to our logo, the 42099 in remembrance of Columbine, because it'll forever be tied to the station. All right, so that was a little history about Littleton Fire and how we got to today. We merged with South Metro Fire three years ago. So we've been steadily getting upgrades throughout those three years, which has been nice. Uh, so we'll take a little walk around the bay here. We've got some different Littleton history. Um, and now it's starting in South Metro as well with the hockey tournaments that they host. Uh, we've got some old prams up here. Station 13, it still says LFD, so a little too far apartment, quite a ways back. Some old scoops. So not much to this station. There's a lot of stations that have a whole lot going on, not too much. This was actually a rookie project that one of our new recruits made recently. Turned out really awesome, place to hang your tags and whatnot. As on every station, there's a little workbench. It's nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. That's what we have here. Our gear lockers, just like all the other stations. All right, so if you look at any of the old pictures from 1967, not too much has changed with the exterior of the building. It obviously looks fairly similar. One of the most recent upgrades um, happened within the last six months. Well, we got a new bay door here. So they cut out this roof, added this up here, and they really just raised it up about a foot, as you can see from here. Um, they found out with the merger and the different engines we have, um, some of the engines and reserves we were in weren't quite fitting in the station. So they're doing this in a couple other stations as well, just making the upgrades, adding this door. Um, I'll peek out here real quick to our back. There's not much going on really. We got our barbecues and smokers like everyone. But we have a school in our district uh, right back there. And then we also have if you can look that way, we're really close to the neighbors. So we got to keep that in mind when we're doing stuff at changeover. We don't want to be around the saws at you know, 6.30 a.m. Um, all the neighbors around here are really great, really supportive of the fire department. So it's fantastic having that support. So we got to take that in mind and also be good neighbors since we're literally right on top of them. So thanks to them. Um, all hours of the day and night, we have school kids using this as a cut through. So you got to really be careful in the area. So it's a main thoroughfare. It's kind of surprising how many people walk through here. All right, All right. Uh, going into our hose tower, which has recently been light on, converted into our medical supplies, which is nice because we used to have in random cabinets, but they brought these shelves in. So it's all our medical restock. Um, still is a functioning hose tower. So if we get any kind of fire and we have to wash our hose, we'll wash it, just hoist it up and allow the hose to dry. Prior to this, as I was prepping, I got some, talked to some of the retirees, and they told me some interesting stories about you know, 30, 40 years ago, anytime you'd come in here. They had a really great working relationship with the highway patrol, and they would call them whenever there was any kind of animals hit. And so anytime you could actually walk in, there would be some kind of animal or game hanging up, because they'd bring it in here and cut it up and hang it to dry. But that was kind of interesting. Uh, it's not gonna happen these days, but that's a hose tower. Uh, I've got a PPE closet. Uh, with COVID and COVID-19, obviously, everyone's gone through their stuff, so we just have our little PPE closet here with all everything we need for that. Our boiler room back here also allows you to cut through back to our little grill area. Snow plow. Utilize pretty much every inch of this station. Uh, it's just some black supply closets. Uh, as we go through this, I'll mention where we had to add some bedrooms. But behind this closet, it's kind of hard to see, but this was a double door that used to go into the bunk room, but that got closed off. They added a cabinet to it. And now we had a supply cabinet. All right, now we'll go in the house. So just like every station, we have an office here. Everyone mentions the online training we have to do. Uh, there's a fair amount of it. It's, we're right on top of each other. We can't make more space here. So it gets pretty cozy, pretty tight in here, but it's good. We make do. It's our house. We enjoy it. So move down the hall. See various uh, citations and whatnot from Littleton Fire Rescue. You know, going back quite a few years. It's always cool to see that history and see some of those names and see where some of those members have progressed and are still with the department. Got our different district maps here. 
You go into the gym. So this back in 2004, 2005, um, Chief Mullen took over and this was the bunk room. So everyone just stayed in here and this was just one bathroom. So with male and female firefighters all packed in here, Chief Mullen decided it would be a good idea that we should probably think about expanding, doing something to give our female and male members some privacy. So they actually split these bathrooms, opened them up, made it separate for male and female. Um, now we just lock the door. Anybody can use whatever they need. Be respectful. So this was the bunk room. And you go through that door, we'll go to that whole back area was an addition. So they added all those bunk rooms so everyone could have privacy. So about a year ago, we went through this gym um, with the help of the crew. And we did some remodeling, repainting, uh, some upgrades. We all worked together, did the repainting. Not a major remodel, but a major upgrade. Some of our guys were really handy. Welded us some racks and whatnot, so the crew was great, a lot of help. So that was good. So we'll continue into the bunk room. So this was the addition that they did in 2004 2005. They had an additional bathroom here and they added six bedrooms, just like most of the other ones. Pretty standard bedrooms. You got three lockers, three shifts, and then you just take your stuff with you or you share, what have you. Uh, one of the interesting things is they've been discussing sleep studies and whatnot and the importance of sleep for firefighter schedules, which was refreshing. Um, so they added sound machines recently with something they upgraded. We actually added these, the uh, blackout screens, if you will, blackout curtains. That was something fantastic. If you haven't never seen these or purchased them, you don't have them, highly recommend them. Um, we got our lights up there, which will alert us if we have calls, just like every other station. We have a first in system. Okay, we'll travel down here. Like I said, all standard bedrooms. They're all pretty much the same. So we'll get to there in a second. Just got a door right here that leads out the front. Right out the flagpole. A lot of people come here to this door, but it's not the main entrance. It's just a, kind of an escape route for us. They added it when they added this addition. That way there would be another exit for all of us to get out. So we'll go through these double doors. This is part of the addition. We'll go to our living room and our kitchen. So you got a little bay window here. This was an exterior window. So it's kind of interesting. There's also one in the back in the restroom. They just added a cabinet into it. So now if you look through this, that was a bay or an outside exterior window. So we don't have the big industrial kitchen like a lot of stations, because again, this was built in 67. There hasn't been too many upgrades really. Um, but again, it's not too bad. It serves its purpose. Uh, we got our kitchen table. Uh, we spent a decent amount of time there. We like to catch up on all the events, do any kind of, any kind of information to put out from the officer, um, and then just catch up on family time. Uh, this being a legacy Littleton house, um, we still do, well, B-Shift, we still do the meals of where we do the lunch, dinner, brunch, dinner. Um, so we kept that going, catch up on family time. It's really important here, uh, really tight crew. There's not a lot of places to escape, like some of the houses. So, like, you pretty much know everyone's secrets here because you're on top of them. Uh, got recliners, TVs, just like the other stations. You know, you can do our online training there, sit here. But with COVID, it's a little more interesting. Kind of have to spread on the table. Some people actually stand over here. Some people use the TV trays. So it's just kind of adjustments. But um, looking around, we just have random things. Old little and stuff, kind of everywhere. The old logo there. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to head back out to the bay. So we made our full circle, square, if you will. You are. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed your time here at Station 13. I'm going to go ahead and pull the next station. We've got station 16.